It's Radio 2 and this is where we say welcome to Noel Gallagher who's joining me. How are you? Very well, how are you? I'm alright, thank you. I was listening to the chat you did with Steve Lamack earlier on today. You finished this album in June. June the 14th. July the 14th, sorry, July the 14th. Oh, you lied to Steve, you said June. June, July, it's all the same, it's all the same. Um, But that's quite a long time ago, yeah. yeah. Well, because I've not got, I don't don't have a record deal. I've only only got a... I've got to, they've got to then my management have to put it in a suitcase and hawk it around the rest of the world and that takes months and months and months to get the right deals for the different territories because I can't if I sign a record deal it'd be a worldwide deal yeah no so you're, you're quite a businessman now then listen to you say I'm the word territories good, I tell you what when I actually become a businessman it's over Okay. It's over. I'm not a businessman. I'll stick to the music. To the music. Does it feel like a brave new world, though, a whole new world well, with, with this album? Well, I mean, you know, every time I put a record out, and it's been the case for the last 15 years, it's just a new game. I tell you, altogether, when I started this album, which was, you know, probably a year ago, my, you know, we got to the, it's a record label, my record label, it's like, this is, this is... I'm like, how many tracks have I got to do? Well, you've got to do this amount of tracks. And that. By the time I'd finished, the rules that were... St- and this is incredible. By the time I'd finished on July the 14th, maybe a year later, all the things that were put in place had gone. Gone. What kind of things? Give us an like, idea. You, know, you need this amount of tracks for this, and one track has got to go exclusively to that thing, and this has got to go there. And you're recording all these tracks, and then you, they say, oh, no, what on earth? We don't do that anymore. <laughs> like, when did that finish? They're like, well, that finished in, you know, last August. It's like quicksand, isn't it? Yeah, it's it's, just it's, I don't think the music business really has got a clue what's going on at the moment. It just seems to me that um, there are no set rules. The rules that were in place for 50 years are working fine, and all of a sudden now it's like, well, you know, I had sat in a meeting recently, and... Uh, it was a meeting of how this record is going to... How, how are we going to release it? And I got so... And it's my record label, and I got so frustrated. I was kind of... And then I'm drifting off and I'm on iTunes, you know, buying <laughs> singles and stuff, and they were like, so so, that, so that's what we're going to do. And I'm like, yeah, well, you know, whatever. And I'm thinking, there's too much time devoted to how we're going to release this record. Just get it out. Get on the road. <laughs> see what and, happens. Yeah, and see, you know? see how that works. But so do, does it, do you feel panic-stricken at that? or No. The, the... No, no, no. you got any, got. I mean, you've got to trust... All these people that work in my office, you know, that's what they they live for this kind of thing, you know what I mean? And they don't only put out my records, like Primal Screen go through my office and the stereophonics and lots of other little things. Um, you know, the Black Rivers, the two guys from oh, the yeah, Dorms, yeah. Uh, Neon Waltz, I don't know if you've heard of them, they go through, they, they work out of our office. So they, they, they're kind of releasing other people's records, but they're kind of experts, you know what I mean? I'm I wouldn't have them come down the studio tell me if F sharp going to G minor is a good idea. So I don't really, you know, take an. In- I, they, they, they tell me what they want, and I give it to them, and then you know they'll get fired if they mess up. <laughs> <laughs> so the album. How long were you in the studio making the album? I mean, on and off for about a year. Okay. I'm more off than on, I've got to say. <laughs> okay, it was. Um, was it, it easy? To, were the songs coming quite easily? So the, the songwriting is always the easy bit. Being, uh, this is the first record I made in London for over ten years. I found that difficult because there's too much temptation to be out all the time, and I produced this myself, not not because I wanted to, because I'd be, I couldn't find another producer to do it. Did you go through different producers and stack them I didn't off? actually. No, I didn't actually work with anybody. I four people rejected it. Not not like oh we don't like it. Um, they were kind of producers like to get involved from the bottom up. And I'd kind of I'd work on it a little bit, then wait for another window for somebody's meeting, and then they'd listen to it and say, well, what do you want me to do? And I'd be like, well, I don't know. Sit at the back and take a quarter of a million pound off me and you know, take all the credit for it. But that's what producers do in it, you know? And uh, they were like... It became, it became apparent that it, it was virtually already done. So then when they told me that, I kind of went back and started again and, you know... Then there we are. Yeah. So who do you trust? You can't just trust yourself. There must be other people that you go, is this all right? Am I doing this okay? Because oh, no, it's quite no, well, risky. My engineer who's engineered this record, I've been making demos with him and off and on and B-sides and all that. From way from 1997, he played keyboards on the Be Here Now tour. Um, I trust him, but I don't really, you know, I don't really, if I'm, if I'm at a point where I'm playing as someone, I've already signed off on it. Whether so you're happy, that yeah. gut instinct is there, you know it's right. It doesn't bother me. The only thing, i got to say, I dithered on the title for the album up until about two days ago till I had to submit it. What were the options? Oh, God, they were just... I thought they were all great, but every time I'd kind of give my kind of mates a CD and they'd say, what's it called? And I'd say, you know, <laughs> and they'd go, 
well, not sure about that. And I, really? Because titles don't mean anything to me, you know, and I go, really? And then I kind of, I must have changed it 12 times. And in the end, one of the girls from my office said, it's literally going up to pre-order tomorrow, so what's it called? And I had to kind of sit and go through some of the lyrics and, you know, just pulled out that. And soon as it went... I just thought, I hate it. Oh, no! <laughs> yeah, but it's a good job I like that. I mean, the, 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 the you know, my manager says, hmm, not a very confident title, is it? And I'm like, what does that mean? Nobody's not, nobody's going to be flicking through iTunes and go, well, oh, I'm not buying that. <laughs> I hate the title. I'm not, I'm not, no, no, no. I've heard it's great, but for the title alone, I'm not going to touch it. You know, but it becomes I, irrelevant in the end, doesn't it? Of course it is, yeah. It's it, like band names, you know what I mean? They're like, none of, no, 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 no titles are great. And, no, no, they all sound yeah, stupid. Let's yeah. play a song. Um, who are you listening to at the moment? Let's Pick one. play some Benjamin Booker. Benjamin Booker, um, as chosen by Noel Gallagher, who's my guest on the show tonight. So you're, you're still a, a real keen consumer of music. Yeah, that's what I spend most of my time and money on, is is buying music, still buying music. Yeah, it's great. It's, it's going to... I find these days that the the good periods they're kind of quite short, but they explode where there's like lots of not lots of good stuff. There's like lots of great stuff, but it's only around very briefly. Do you feel like with that at that stage at the moment? Yeah, sometimes you watch later with Jules, and a whole series can be just neither here nor there, and you kind of. But like this series so far, every night there's been something on it that's been amazing that I've gone straight out and bought, you know. And um, and is that inspiring for you as a musician, or does it make you a bit insecure? No, it's great that it's great that it's the thing that we all love is still happening. You know, it's like I was at Glastonbury this year. I went actually went for three days. I didn't see a single band. I watched it all on the iPlayer when I got home. <laughs> and just before I left Glastonbury, um, some everyone was going on about this band Jungle. And uh, I went and watched them on the iPlayer from Glastonbury. It's the most decadent thing I've ever done. Is go Glastonbury for three days and then go home and sit on the couch and watch it all. It's brilliant. And uh, I seen them and I thought. Wow, that's amazing. So I went and bought the album and I kind of like, I think it's like a modern Sly Stone where they all sing mm. and they're quite unique melodies. And then I, I went to see them at the Roundhouse and I thought they were absolutely stunning. Really yeah. great, yeah. Really special. Um, wh how did you do Glastonbury? Who did you go with? I went with Friends. Mrs. Sarah and uh, a bunch of people, Grimmy and all that lot were there. Just to have a great time. Yeah, I don't... Really, Glastonbury's... I mean, you know yourself. You can go to Glastonbury and not really bother about the music. I don't think the lineup was particularly great last year, mm. you know. No, it was not um, a vintage one. The best you... thing, I actually seen one act and I went to see the Cuban Brothers in the theatre tent and they were absolutely hilarious. Oh, Mikey is on top form and uh, we've seen that and then there's too much going on. on the, where on... Did, so you were camping, obviously, and then... <laughs> I was staying at Five Star. <laughs> I was staying at Five Star Hotel about... 20 minutes away, I don't camp. Obviously, my little joke. Not somebody, I've been there, but so are you camping here? I'm like, sorry? <laughs> camping? I'm like, you're aware I've sold 75 million albums, I don't camp <laughs> for anybody. And, um, no. So, I, so where did you, what did you experience at Glastonbury then? What other things? Uh, just going up to the, the after hours stuff is, the, is, I mean, when I first started going to Glastonbury, there was <clears throat> a couple of tents, and then when it when it finished at two o'clock, and it was kind of you're drawn around the dark. It's truly mind blowing now, because I I hadn't, I've only recently started doing the kind of waiting for it to go dark, and then let's get out in amongst it. Um, at the tender age of what? At the tender age of forty something, I started doing that. I'm forty seven now, so the last <laughs> three or four years I've started to, and it's brilliant. I do because I've never seen any of it for years because you kind of. You get there, you do your thing, you end up in a you know in a, in a Winnebago somewhere, and the next thing someone's going, Come, we've got to be in you know Kazakhstan in twenty minutes. You're on stage, and um, so this is the luxury of being your own boss and yeah, kind of doing things kind of, on your own terms. Kind of, yeah, I kind of wasn't playing, wasn't had nothing better to do than to just hang out, and it was great. <laughs> Well, it seemed right to play a bit of Oasis as we're talking to the man himself, Noel Gallagher. There's a lot more Noel on the way in the next half hour. This is BBC Radio 2 Online on digital radio and on 88 to 91 FM. Brian Prothero and Pinball. Pinball so tell yeah. me, tell me more, Noel Gallagher. So the, I was, I'm going to have to name drop here. I, I was out, I was in, when I went to see my producer in uh, in LA, uh, my initial Dave Sardi, who didn't end up doing this album, was playing demos. I ended up on a night out with Russell Brand, who was living there at the time before he got booted out. And, uh, not that he's been booted out, it's just that his films were rubbish, so he's been sent home. Um, and Morrissey, 
We ended up having a night out with oh Morrissey. Oh my gosh, what's that? And, uh, honest to God, he's the funniest man I've ever met in my Morrissey. life. Morrissey? Absolutely side splitting. In what but, way? He's just hilarious. He's not really got a good word to say about anybody. Just miserable, but, but funny. No, with he's it. not miserable. Not in the slightest. He might, he's literally one of the funniest men I've ever met. Wow. <clears throat> he's very cutting. And uh, he bullied Russell into poor Russell. I don't think he's ever recovered. But anyway, we're in this bar, and Morrissey's brought this CD with him of like a mixed CD, not of his own stuff, dusty stuff. And he kind of he just gets one of his people tell him to turn that music off, tell him to put this on. And we'd be chatting about whatever, and then he the music would be going, he would pay any attention, and he'd suddenly go, Name this tune, name me this tune. And he'd be like, I don't, I don't know. And he's like, Oh, good God, he got to number 16 in 1974. I was like, I don't know. And he's like, This is Brian Prothero Pinball. I'm like, Right, great. So, anyway, this track, I was in the studio some six months later, and I was doing this B side. But this track and it was kind of like a Bob Dylan kind of thing, finger picking. It doesn't. It was. It was an all right song. It wasn't it was a bit nondescript. And one night before we left, I, my engineer and my drummer, who were twin brothers, I said, "No, have you heard this track, Pinball by Brian Prothero?" And they said, "No." So we played it, and a light came on, and I thought, "What if I tried this track in that style?" And then I kind of went home that night and rewrote it a little bit. Came back in, and it's the the opening track of the album. It's called oh. River Man, and it's amazing. And um. So when have, I see when I see the great man next, I shall thank him. You have him to thank, Morrissey. Yeah. Wow! You were saying, um, sorry, going back to Glastonbury, which we were talking about before we played that track. Will you be playing there next year? Is that something I hope you'd like so. to yeah, do? Yeah, I've, I've not been. I've not been asked. No, I've not been asked. But, but you're I'm, up for it. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm around. You know, and okay. available. Your diary must be very full. It must be kind of panning out already. Um, yeah, I get I get kind of you know little calendar things sent to my um, computer saying you know this is what you'll be doing for the next year and a bit. Well, it's kind of reassuring in a way. Those think, all right. Well, so we still going to be working. Yeah, just think, well, okay, right. I'm going back to work. Good, good. There's work out there. That feels good. Yeah. You were saying that songwriting comes really easily to you. Mm. What, what's on this album? What are you writing about? What kind of things? Um, <clears throat> what am I writing about? They're still very direct. Are they about people in your life? Yeah, not um, more. Si um, well, all the and this is. I'm not, I'm not just saying this because she's my wife, but all the songs, the, the love songs, are about my beautiful wife, Sarah. Um, and I'm not just saying that because she makes me say it. Uh, but you can still find different ways of yeah, saying how much you yeah, love yeah, her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I mean, that's the, the, you know, everything in song has already been said way before even Elvis came along, you know. So the, the beauty of it, I mean, it's all poetry at the end of the day. It's just, you're only retelling a story. But most, most of the songs, bar the first single, which is kind of a bit throwaway, and another one which is a bit throwaway, they're all very direct songs about, me and you, or you and I, or us, you know what I mean? They're kind of... I thought you'd written a song for me, then. I'm still working on that one, I'm <sighs> afraid, Joel. <laughs> it's a bit of an odyssey. So still, yeah, it's quite long. <laughs> Do it for me and Steve, that'd be quite good. Call it the evening session days or something. <laughs> um, uh, survivors. I always, look, I, I, mean, I always look at songs as scenes in films, and they're, they're, you know, they're scenes from heavy romantic films not romantic comedies don't do comedy um, but God I would never have had you down as a romantic way back well, no, maybe no, I, I mean, would I've, I, I, I've insisted all my life that I'm the ultimate romantic because I still believe in the power of music and, and joy and all that but my missus will she's probably choking now on her health bar <laughs> what song does she like best out of the on this uh, album what does she like best she likes a track called The Dying of the Light which is very very emotionally uplifting and beautiful and that's about her uh, and that is about, it's about us, more than The oh. Dying of the Lights, it's, it's, it's in the title. Uh, it's, it might be the most truthful song I've ever written. Oh. Uh, there's one on it called, uh, the, I can't give the titles away because somebody will clip me around the air, but there's a track, the closing track Johnny Marr plays on, mm -hmm. which uh, is, it's kind of, it's kind of a bit Echo in the Bunny Manish, but kind of di like disco-ish. Mm. You've spoken effusively about Johnny Marr. Yeah, well, he's my mate. Yeah, uh, yeah. He's, he's just, you love him almost as much as you love Sarah. That's what's coming uh, across. <laughs> no, no, I love Sarah infinitely more. But Johnny, I've known Johnny for a lot. I mean, I met Johnny before I even had a record here. Before I met Alan McGee and all that, he was a friend before then. He was in many ways the first Oasis fan, and uh, yeah, and he's you know I've not played with him down the years. He's just, I mean you must have met him. Down mm, the years. He's no, just lovely. A, he's a top. 
top dude, man. So to have him on the album, sweet. A fa- yeah, I mean, he, he's been on Oasis Records and all that, but he has a particular style. That, and I have been in studios a lot when a producer will say, oh, this bit here kind of needs a, like, uh, you know, a little bit of a Johnny Marr thing. And he's just like, do you even realise what you're saying? It's like, nobody plays like him. I can call him. Yeah, let's get him. I can Point call up. him. I can't do a Johnny Marr thing. <laughs> Uh, you know, and, and I tried to get him on the last record, but he was busy, so I managed to nail him and do this one. It's amazing. He plays on the on the on the the last track, which is going to be the next single. Okay, and what's that called? I can't tell you. Oh no, somebody, no somebody. Will... Okay, no, I don't want to die. Yeah, not yeah. not tonight, anyway. No. <laughs> do you watch X Factor? Because obviously your daughter, yeah. she's grown up quite a lot. I, I wouldn't yeah. have thought she was inflicting that on you anymore. No, she's on telly now. I know, I know that's yeah. amazing. Yeah, she's good at it as well. Go I, I do, I do. She every time she's on the telly and she's there and we're watching it. She was just to me, why are you laughing? I'm like, because it's just hilarious that you're kind of this little thing and now you're kind of on TV. So tell us what, she, what she's doing. She's on a thing called the Friday Download on CBBC. CBBC? CBBC. And it's a, it's a magazine programme for the youth. And she's a presenter. And she's one of the team, yeah. And uh, God. it's quite... It's amazing that she's got the she's got the thing she's got the gift of the gab and all that. And uh, where did that come from? I know, indeed. And um, but I just find it very, very funny. She's like, "Don't stop laughing." I'm like, "It's just hilarious." <laughs> um, I'll let you go now. It's been lovely to see you. Thank you very Thank much you very indeed. Much. Thank and you. we'll play the track. This is in the heat of the moment. That's it. There you go. Brand new from Noel Gallagher's High Flying Birds. It's called In the Heat of the Moment. The album is Chasing Yesterday. It's not out for years. Well, half a year. Um, 2nd of March is when it eventually comes out. So much love for this man. It's ridiculous. Noel Gallagher, thank you very much indeed. We're going to talk about albums with Matt Everett after this.